Hi everyone! This video is for you in case you weren't able to attend the open house. I'm going to give you the same information that I gave during the open house and if you have any questions feel free to email me um, and I will get back to you right away. So first off, my name is Christine Dubois. I was born and raised in Los Alamos. Um, I'm a third generation Los Alamosian, which um, is fairly hard to do. It's a pretty new town, all things considered. Um, I went to Aspen School, kindergarten through sixth grade. So it's um, pretty neat being back there. In fact, Miss Young, the writing teacher, was my third grade teacher, but don't tell her I told you that. Um, um, this year has already started off way better than I thought it would. I was so nervous going into it, but these are just incredible, resilient, and frankly, brave students. So it's already been a pleasure, and um, I'm much less nervous about what we're going to accomplish while we're online this year. So first off, I'd like to just walk through the schedule. Um, it's slightly confusing because there's these big chunks of time that look like kids aren't engaged in anything, but they will always have work to do during these independent learning um, sections during the week. So we put in uh, the first half an hour for students to prepare for school. And during that time, they should be fully awake, have had taken a shower or cleaned themselves up ready for school. They should be dressed. They should have had breakfast. If at all possible, they should have gotten a little bit of exercise, even if it's just, you know, doing jumping jacks in the house or going for a walk around the block. A little bit of exercise will just calm them and get them ready to start the day. Um, they should also check their email during that time and then have all of their supplies next to them ready to go for the day. So after they've prepared, we'll have our good morning meeting. Um, that will be a chance for us to check in, to talk about the schedule, for me to give any reminders, um, and sometimes we'll play a game or we'll watch a silly video that I found. Um, then they have their specials. Mondays they have art, Tuesdays music, Thursdays PE, and Fridays library. They know how to get to these classes. They're separate Google Classrooms, and they know right after our meeting to just go into that classroom and join that meeting. They get about a 20-minute break in between specials and math, and that's time that I have asked them to not be on their computer at all. So I want them to move away from their workstation, to get up and move if they can, go outside if that's possible. That would be the best for them get a little bit of exercise, get some movement, just not be on their phone or their computer, give their eyes a little break from their screen for that 20 minutes. It's also a great chance for them to go to the bathroom or get a drink or eat a snack. After their break, they come back for math. I'm their math teacher. We have a brand new math curriculum this year that's really immersive and has a pretty great technological aspect to it. So. Um, we'll start our formal math lessons on Thursday of this week, which I'm excited for. Then um, they get a five minute break. They'll have English language arts again with me. Um, we will read passages together, answer comprehension questions, and then do um, different projects based on the content of that unit. Their next class is one of three rotations. They will have me for social studies on Monday, um, Miss Coy for science on Tuesdays, Miss Young for writing on Thursdays, and then Friday is a rotation study hall. So each of the three teachers will have an open Google Meet and any students can drop in and ask us questions or get help or show us what they've done if they've done something they're proud of or just check in and say hi to us and ask anything they'd like to know about what's coming up or what they should be doing. Um, after their rotation, we blocked in 30 minutes for lunch, and then the rest of the afternoon is independent learning. So through each of their classes, they're going to be assigned work to do in the afternoon. So they won't really have homework in the sense of something that they'll do after 3 o'clock every day, 
they will get homework that they'll do during independent learning. And that might also include using programs like Reading Plus or Imagine Math, or if we're lucky enough to get it this year, Reflex Math, um, on top of anything else that's been assigned. Then each day I will have an optional closing meeting. They can check in with me or ask questions then, or they can just pop in to say hi. If there are enough kids, then we might play a game together. Um, and then their day is over at three o'clock. So that's generally what the schedule looks like, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesdays is really just like their independent afternoons except that they might have services from other teachers. So if they receive any type of special ed service, they might get to meet with those teachers on Wednesday mornings. Um, I will also meet with small groups. I got to meet with one this morning, just kind of out of the blue, posted, if anyone wants to play a Kahoot with me, join. And I had five students join and we had a great time. So I'll also do that occasionally on Wednesdays. Um, in the independent learning during the week, I will also meet with small groups. Right now, I'm meeting with them just to get to know them, showing, I'm asking them to show me things they're interested in. I've gotten to see some really neat art projects so far from the students I've met with. So I will be meeting with everybody, hopefully by the end of next week, I will we'll have met with all of the 20 students at least once in a very small group. Okay, I think that covers the schedule. Um, you can see that it's color coded. Direct instruction means that they need to be attending that meeting. Morning afternoon meetings and then independent learning is green. So that's our week to week schedule. Um, next up, I just wanted to talk about Google Meets. They've gone super well so far. Um, students know the expectations. They're things like keeping your camera on and your microphone off only using the chat to ask questions, um, but they're also being really wonderful with each other because they've had to do a lot of troubleshooting. And when kids get kicked out of meetings, their peers are really great about typing in the chat box what they missed when they come back. So that takes a lot off of my plate because they're, um, you know, they're being responsible for each other, which is, you know, just another wonderful thing about this group. Um, there have been some pretty bad Wi-Fi connections for a couple of students and there's, you know, as you know, I can't do anything about that. So please check in with your child and if they're having trouble with Wi-Fi, please problem solve. It might be something like moving where their workspace so they're closer to the router or um, I don't know what else might work, but just trying to find a way so that they can successfully attend those Google Meets. I know it's really hard when you have a lot of people at home working at the same time or attending a Google Meet at the same time. Um, so please, if you can think of a way that I can help, please let me know. Um, I think that's about it for Google Meets. Um, I'm going to show you Clever. Clever is basically just a password bank for students. Um, it has all of the apps that they use during the day. Um, stored together. So if they click on my page, then they can see all of the resources that I've added for them. Right now, I think the only one they can use is Reading Plus. Eventually, they'll have access to Imagine Math, hopefully Reflex Math. Um, but from Clever, that's how they access these, uh, these programs. And it's linked in our Google Classroom so that they know how to get into Clever. Once they sign in once, though, they should be good to go. Um, they will use Reading Plus. They've already done the benchmark assessment, so I have an idea of what reading level they're at right now. Um, they will have somewhere between two and four reading lessons and two vocabulary lessons to pass each week through Reading Plus, and they will do those during their independent time. Once we get Imagine Math working, they will be asked to pass, I think, three lessons each week. That might change depending on how it looks. Um, but they'll be asked to pass a certain number of Imagine Math lessons each week. And Imagine Math and Reading Plus are pretty awesome because they um, teach students at the level they're actually at. So they're adaptive. 
and they both offer a lot of help and support to students who need it. So um, we'll get a lot of use out of them. Um, during the pickup, I gave out most of the power school sheets. However, I did forget to give several families their power school sheets. So I will either mail them to you or figure out another way to get them to you. I'll also be emailing you a copy of all of the login information for power school. And power school is just a way for you to check on your students' grades and see what they need to do. You can also check in Google Classroom to see what their grade is and to see if they're missing any assignments. So that might, if you ask them to show you their Google Classroom, they can show you the grades tab and how they've scored on assignments they've had so far. Um, the last part I just wanted to go through a couple of positives and some negatives that I'm um, experiencing so far and maybe we can brainstorm together on how to make it a little bit more successful. First positives, this is the most resilient and kind group of sixth graders that I've ever taught and I can tell that in just the first three days. It um, has made me feel so much better about this year. They are truly, truly an amazing group of kids. So well done parents and guardians, pat yourselves on the back, give yourselves a big hug. I'm just amazed by these kids. They are absolutely incredible. Um, they are, as I said before, the internet is making it really difficult for some kids to learn. So please check in with them and if they're getting frequently booted out, please um, troubleshoot and try to figure out how to make their internet connection the best it can be for them. Um, as you've seen, there's lots of extra time during the day where they're not physically in, well, I guess it's not physically, where they're not in contact with me. Um, however, I'm always available to them through text messages, through GoGuardian, which is an app that um, on my computer that monitors what they're doing so that I can check in and see what they're working on and they can chat with me through GoGuardian. They can also email me and I'll get right back to them. So as I've told them, they're never really alone. I'm always here to help them. They just have to reach out. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that's been hard for me is that I've always made exercise a big part of my classroom. I've always been the only sixth grade to have a run walk program. Um, you know, we take extra recesses frequently because I think it's so important for especially, well, for everybody, but especially for kids to get a lot of exercise. So my big favor that I'd like to ask of you is please help your kids get outside. If that's just taking a walk around the neighborhood, that's fantastic. If it's just going out onto your front porch and being outside, breathing fresh air, maybe doing jumping jacks or dancing or whatever, please get them outside. Please help them get exercise. This is a lot of sitting. My back has actually been sore from sitting because I'm a pretty active person. Um, so I'm trying to find ways to keep myself moving while being in front of a computer all day. So please help them with this. And if you can think of a way that I can help, please let me know. We will start taking um, movement breaks during the week, um, during classes. So that might help a little, but it won't be enough. So please make exercise a priority for your child or your student. Um, I think that's about it. I'm sure I forgot a lot, but that's a pretty good place to start. And as always, if you have questions or concerns, please reach out to me and I'll get back to you right away. Um, just, I can't even begin to express how happy I am to have this class for sixth grade. And I sure hope that I get to see them in person at some point this year. Uh, with that, take good care, stay healthy, wash your hands, all that stuff, and I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.